the other thing is, you know, when Jesus preached, his main message was the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we've talked about this before, but his main message was the kingdom of God. And there's a um, a really famous American professor. He's a charismatic. He believed in the things of the spirit. And he was in, in America, this is about 20 years ago, and he asked his uh, his university theology class, he said to them, what is the main message of the Bible? No, of God. And 90% said okay. love. Love. Mm. Love. And he said, wrong. <laughs> he said, uh, he said, yes, it does talk about it a little bit in the Gospel of John. Mm -hmm. But the other three Gospels only twice. He said it's not. Something like 73 times Jesus mentions the kingdom of God. Mm. He said it's definitely the kingdom of God. So that's interesting that we can have uh, people doing university level courses on theology mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and getting the basic message of Jesus wrong. Why, why do they get it wrong? Because the kingdom of God, when you read about it, it says, <clears throat> Jesus says, the kingdom of God is not of this world. Mm -hmm. And the kingdom of God, the Lord's Prayer, it says, thy kingdom come. It's not on this earth now, but it needs to come. But it's in, in us, but it's mainly in heaven. So it's like the whole message of the kingdom of God is not really um, understood. Mm -hmm. And it's been interpreted in a natural way rather than a spiritual way. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking of writing another book rediscovering the kingdom of god because it also says that when mm -hmm. you see the hand of god the finger of god and it releases uh releases um people from oppression this is the kingdom of god so you know when when people are released from oppression that's the kingdom of god um so the kingdom of god is a spiritual thing and that's why we don't understand because the thing that's Unbelievable to me is the fact that 50% of churches don't even believe in speaking in tongues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To me, that's unbelievable because that's just such a basic spiritual thing. Mm -hmm. You know, they, it's like, and, and why is it? I believe it all comes down to the fact that we don't understand how evil Greek is. Um. And I thought I might talk a little bit about that to you now. How evil Greek is. Uh, you uh, verses for you, but a few, and then I will. Um, okay. Okay. Now, first verse is Revelation two thirteen. Revelation 2.13. It says, I know your works and where, and where you dwell, where Satan's throne is. And you hold fast to my name and did not deny my faith, even in days in which Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was killed among you where Satan dwells. Okay, so what it's saying is Satan's throne is in Pergamon. Mm. Where is Pergamon? Greece. In Greece, yes. Mm. Do you know? Do you know? There's actually a really interesting history to this. That in the Second World War, the Nazis dug up this temple to Satan and took it to Germany and rebuilt it. It's true. But initially, you know, here's, here you have John. And have you noticed when we're talking about the things of the Spirit, just about every time I'm quoting John. 1 John, John 15 about the vine. John wrote Revelation. John is the one who writes about spiritual things. He is the really spiritual disciple. And it says he is the one that God loved. 
And so he spoke, I believe that God's, that Jesus spoke more about spiritual things to John than the others because mm -hmm. he was closer to John. Um, so that's why he wrote. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and just to, to have another thing quickly. Mm -hmm. um, this book. Can you see this book? Not the four pages. The four faces of God, okay? What it's talking about is the four Gospels. Uh -huh. And so this Gospel here is the lion, mm -hmm. which is purple. And that's talking about Matthew, because Matthew talks about Jesus, the Hebrew king. Mm. And purple is the color, because that's the color of being a king. Uh, this one here is Luke, which is... Jesus, the perfect man, because mm -hmm. Luke was a doctor. And when it comes to women and childbirth yes. and, and babies, it's all in Luke. Mm. So that's what Luke talks about. This one here is Mark, Mark, because Mark talks about in Mark, the most common phrase in, in Mark is Jesus went, Jesus went, because Jesus is a servant in Mark. And he does what everybody asks. He just does it. He doesn't question it. Mark is very simple. See, Mark talks about Jesus, the servant, and the cut is scarlet, and the animal is an ox who dies, works till it dies. That's the animal. And and in Luke, the there is no animal, but it's uh, the hand of a man is, is the symbol of Luke. And the color is linen which is the color of man's clothes they had all men's clothes with that color then john Eagle. is the spiritual book mm. john speaks about jesus the spiritual man mm. and and the the animal is an eagle and the color is blue and you say graham why are you telling us this stuff because Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. And and Revelation 4 verse 2 verse 2. Immediately I was in the spirit and behold a throne set in heaven and one sat on the throne. God was on the throne. Okay, now going down to verse 6. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like crystal. Midst of the throne, around the throne, were four living creatures full of eyes in front and back. The first living creature was like a lion. Mm. The second living creature like a calf, which is an ox. The third living creature had the face of man. Oh. And the fourth living creature was a flying eagle. Mm. Okay. And they're all of them are saying, did not rest night or day, saying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was mm -hmm. and is to come. So what they are is this is a statement about Jesus. A hidden statement about Jesus. This is talking about the ministry of Jesus. Okay. It's talking about the ministry of Jesus because Jesus has a ministry. Mm -hmm. As king, his ministry is authority. As a man, his ministry is humanity and to be kind. Mm -hmm. As an ox, his ministry is sacrifice. He's called to be sacrificial. And as an eagle, he's called to be spiritual and prophetic. Mm -hmm. And, okay, so this is the ministry of Jesus. So we can ask... <laughs> What, how good is the church? And I would argue the church doesn't understand authority. Yeah. Most of the church does not understand authority. It understands humanity. It understands sacrifice. But it doesn't really understand the spiritual. So you have half of Jesus' ministry it doesn't really understand. And half of it it understands. Okay, now the other, there's a lot, a lot. This whole book is about why that's true. 
But the first thing I want to say to you as proof of this is there's when you look at the genealogies, you see the proof. You know, a genealogy is when they talk about people, lists of who was born by, born by, born by, born by. That's you know, who was their father, their father, their father. The genealogy with Matthew starts with Abraham because he's talking about Jesus the Jew. Because he's the he is the king of the Jews. So beginning of it, it says the genealogy starts with Matthew. With Luke, the genealogy starts with Adam because it's Jesus the man. With Mark, there is no genealogy because a servant doesn't have a genealogy. Hmm. With John, the genealogy goes back to God. It says, in the beginning was God. Oh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. So it's a spiritual genealogy. It's talking about his connections with the Heavenly Father. So the four genealogies represent the four ministries of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And if you look, and if you look, this book is impossible to buy. No. You need a miracle to buy this book because it's been out of print for about 20 years. So that's your challenge. See if you can buy this book. It's really good. Yeah. But, but even if you can't, there are a few things that you can find on the internet that are kind of give you a little bit, but don't give you the whole book. The whole book is fantastic. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is the colors, okay? All the colors. When I'll let me just find the scripture for you. This is, I think, is incredible. It goes back to Exodus, I think it's 25. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Have a look at Exodus 25, verse 4. See, this is the clothes of man of fine linen. So you have purple, blue, scarlet, and fine linen. The four colors. This is this is the uh con this is the sanctuary. This is the temple in the desert having these colors. Now between Exodus 25 and 39. Those four colors are mentioned 39 times. 39 times. So think about it. The book of Exodus was written in maybe 1880 BC. So Nearly 1,900 years before Jesus, God is making a prophetic statement about Jesus and his ministry. And he doesn't do it with the name Jesus. He does it with the colors of his ministry. Mm. And talking about ministry... What do you know the the Jewish name for Jesus? Yeah, we are. Uh, no, that's the Jewish name for God. It's Mes Messiah. Messiah. I can't oh, pronounce yeah. it. Messiah. Messiah. Yeah, it, it's a Jewish word for Messiah, yeah. but it means anointed one. It means one of the Spirit. And you know, uh, from. The simplest one is Isaiah 61, where Isaiah 61 talks about, and the anointing is upon me. You know, this is the one that's quoted uh, yeah. in Luke 4. 
All the way, the definition of the Messiah is one who has the presence of the Holy Spirit, has the anointing. So Jesus is defined by the presence of the Holy Spirit. And what I want to say is that his followers should be defined by the presence of the Holy Spirit. It's not a big jump. But if you look and you study all the verses that talk about the pre about Jesus, they're all they all talk about miracles. They all talk about well, not all, but most of them talk about miracles, and most of them talk about the presence of the Holy Spirit. So, the presence of the Holy Spirit is central to defining the role of Messiah, and He's the one that does miracles. You know, they all know that he's the one that, you know, that prays for people to be delivered, for people to be healed. They all know that that is the Messiah and Jesus did that. So, so the ministry of Jesus is defined by miracles. And so in the same way, I believe that when it says that, you know, we're made in the image of God, God is the one that does miracles. God is the one that transforms God is the one that overcomes. You know, we are made in the image of God. I believe that God has given us those things as well or wants us to have those things as well. And when we embrace the spirit, all of those things can be done. Does does that make sense or am I, am I exaggerating too much? No, no, it's not exaggerating, yeah. See, I think that's what we're called to do. Yeah. And so that's what we're called to do. And yet the churches have embraced this Greek thinking and intellectualism. Yeah. And as soon as you get into intellectualism, you separate yourself from the spiritual connection. Jesus never got into intellectualism. You look, he never got into intellectualism. He always gave people short answers. And what did he do? He focused on relationship. He focused on experience. And to learn from him, people learned by walking with him. That was the way they, they learned. Yeah. They didn't learn by going to lectures of really intelligent people. They learned by walking with him. It's just like walking in the garden with Adam and Eve. That's what the 12 disciples did. They walked with Jesus. Hmm. So Jesus wants his people to be spiritual. So, okay, so this is my challenge for you. Mm -hmm. I would like you to to pray about getting a prophetic word for me. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to get it straight away. No. You can give it you can give it to me next week. Or <laughs> you can say, Graham, we've got it already. You can come and come online and you whenever. But I'll try and get a prophetic word for you too as well. Okay. This is the homework. <laughs> this is homework. Yeah. <laughs> because I want you to learn. Yeah. And spend time with the Holy Spirit. That's really your homework. Yeah. Is to spend time with the Holy Spirit. And spend time with the Holy Spirit speaking to you. Because I believe that when Jesus says all things are possible to those who believe, and whenever two or three people ask anything in my name, it will be done for them. I believe Jesus is saying to you, it, it's it's like it's like the uh where where Jesus talks about the um uh, the mustard seed is like the kingdom of God. Well, because what happens with a mustard seed? A mustard seed is very small. Mm. Mustard seed is very small, but it grows to be very big. But what what happens to a mustard seed? You've got to plant it in the ground. It's got to die. Mm. Mm. And then it grows. Mm. Mm. Okay, bury in the ground, yeah. So it's talking about our flesh. We have to get our flesh to die. We have to crucify our flesh. Mm. And then the spirit can grow and do big things. Mm. But it doesn't always happen quickly. And it doesn't always happen easily. But when we learn to sacrifice our 
spirit, when we learn to subdue our spirit, to crucify our, uh, sorry, crucify our flesh, then the spirit will grow big. And and what really helps is where you get a group of people speaking prophetically over each other. Because the other verse I want you to read is Ezekiel 37. Ezekiel 37 is where Ezekiel speaks to the dry bones and prophetically proclaims that they turn into the army of God. Hmm. And we want to prophetically proclaim that your home group turns into something big. Hmm. Even though maybe it's only you and Camille, it might be only the two of you in your mm -hmm. home group. We're going to prophetically proclaim that it turns into something big. Even though me, I, I'm just in a situation at the moment where people are starting to understand, but I don't really have any big things happening. But we're going to keep proclaiming, and I'd like you to help me proclaim over me that God's going to open up big doors. So we proclaim over each other prophetically. Amen. And we speak it pr prophetically and we open doors and we open doors to finance and we open doors to, mm. we open doors to ministry and mm. we encourage each other and just see what's happening. Yeah. And, and actually, even though I'm just saying, you know, please do it for homework. I would like you to every week say, I believe God's saying this about you. And every week I want to say something about you prophetically. Yeah. yeah. Because I believe that's what God wants. He wants us to be led. He wants us to get, you know, not just the big things, but even the little things, you know, just, and maybe not the detail, but just, you know, God wants you to proclaim his victory or God wants you not to be upset or something, whatever it is, you know, uh, just to get a word for each other, I think is really, is really helpful. And so the other thing I want to encourage you to do is that the way to make, to overcome, the way to overcome in the world of the spirit, I believe the secret is found in Psalm 22, verse 3. The secret is Psalm 22, verse 3. And I'll read Psalm 22, verse 3 for you. And... And Psalm 22, verse 3 says, But you are holy, O you who are enthroned on the praises of Israel. So what does that say? It says that when we praise God, we make Jesus king. Mm. That's what it's saying. When we praise God, we make Jesus king. So when we talk about the Lord's Prayer, the Lord's Prayer says, as we pray, our Heavenly Father, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So when, when his kingdom comes, mm -hmm. Heaven comes. Mm. When the kingdom of God comes, then the will of God, the perfect will of God comes. Mm. And the perfect will of God is love. It's overcoming. It's blessing. It's to bring heaven to earth. We bring heaven to earth when we praise God. Mm. We bring heaven to earth when we praise God. You know, so many people don't understand this as a as a principle of prayer. And it ties in with Psalm 100. It ties in with Psalm 100, which says, Shout joyfully to the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and delight. Come before his presence with joyful singing. It says, come before God with joyful singing. Don't come to before God with your problems. Come before God with joyful singing. No one fully recognized with gratitude that the Lord himself is God, that he made us, not we ourselves. 
We are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. Enter his gates with a song of thanksgiving in his courts with praise. Be thankful to him, bless him and praise his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy and loving kindness are everlasting. So if we praise God, and what it's saying here in Psalm 100 is when we come to God, we should praise him. So when we praise him, it's saying in Psalm 22, we make him king. So the problem that we have in our lives is that Jesus isn't totally the king. He isn't able to bring the fullness of healing that he wants to bring. He isn't able to bring the fullness of finance. He isn't able to bring the fullness of revelation. But all that comes with praise. All that comes with praise. So if we praise him more, and I don't mean just singing worship songs. I mean just saying, praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. Just saying things like that. I thank you for who you are. I thank you for your blessings. Just worship and thank you in whatever words you feel the Spirit saying. But I promise you, if you just keep saying that for just two or three minutes, you feel the spiritual presence change. Yeah, yeah. You feel angels. You feel you feel the power of God. And we just praise God. And I just ask right now, Lord God, that your, your presence come more, more over Alex and Camille. Lord God, I praise you and I worship you. Lord God, put in them a heart of praise, a heart of worship. Lord God, I just release your glory over them that they will do great things, that they will overcome the darkness that they face in the UK, that, Lord God, that your glory will overcome there as it does everywhere. And I just thank you that you've empowered them to be people of overcoming. Help them to praise you and worship you all the time, even when things are difficult. Help them to keep praising you, keep enthroning you as king, and that will enable you to overcome. And I just proclaim your overcoming power is over them yeah. and that they are people who will release your glory. And I just thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You feel the power. I, I don't know about you, but I felt the power. Things change when mm. you praise God. You can say wonderful things, you know, like uh, speak the word, say lots of really true things, but nothing changes the spirit like praising God. Mm. Amen. So, so we want to do things for God. We praise God. Mm. worship God we thank him and 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 in the same way that if you want to come into the into prophetic you praise God and then you ask him for a prophetic word you want you want God to show you where to go you praise him and you thank him you say I know you want to show me which churches to go to I know mm. you want to show me the people I just praise you and I worship you and I just ask you, show me how I can find it. Show me how I can meet these people. Just mm. show me and just and just proclaim. I just and then also just break off negative powers that are stopping you. Mm. Just say, Lord God, I just break off negative powers in Jesus name. I just thank you. All the things that are stopping me fulfilling my ministry, mm. that you just break off and that I just that I just proclaim that your your presence is arising in my life and your presence is arrive, arising in my ministry and that you're a God of overcoming and nothing can stop you. Amen. And you see, there's, there's just a power in the spiritual realm that when the church just focuses on the natural, they can't tap into. It. And that's one of the reasons why the church tends to be so powerless because they're trying to do things in the flesh, which is the Greek intellectual way. So it's why it's important for us not to be Greek we can be intelligent, but but the important thing is where to do things in a spiritual way, to open the doors of the spirit, to speak blessing over people, to open the doors to our spirit and to try and crucify the flesh. So, yeah. So that's about what I wanted to say. So does that make sense, Miss Camille? Yes. Okay, it's just I think you're hiding over there. So. It's just a camera. <laughs> I know. I I know. But I like to see your face sometimes and say, yes, Graham. Okay, thank yes. you, Miss Camille. Yeah. Yes. And thank you, Mr. Alex. So so that's what I wanted to share today. Mm -hmm. I wanted to share that all these 
things like when when you go to school, they all teach you the Greek way to yeah. think. They don't teach you the Hebrew way to think. And the church is not teaching the Hebrew way to think. Hmm. The Hebrew way to think is listening to the Spirit. So we want to listen to the Spirit. So that's your homework for this week is to try and listen to the Spirit and specifically what the Spirit is saying to you two and what it's saying to me. And I'll do the same thing. I'll try and find what the Spirit is saying to you and what it's saying to me. And we can share with each other. And the other thing that I would say about that is sometimes when it's hard to find the exact thing to say, God will give you a scripture. So if you can't find the exact thing, ask for a scripture. It's very, mm -hmm. it's very helpful. It's very helpful. So, so hopefully that's good. And hopefully, and I will keep working on that, but that's, that's kind of the way I think it would be good for me to start my presentation to talk about all of these influence, intellectual influences that come on the Western world and that have robbed the church of its spirituality. Yeah. Because spirituality has power, but the world has made us think that spirituality is not so clever, it's not so intellectual, it's not so good. But mm. ultimately, without the spirit, we can do nothing. Mm. And we need to know that, and we need to start on that basis. And start every day not saying, God, tell me something, but God, open the door of the spirit. Teach me through your spirit, not teach me through my mind. Mm. And and you know, there are all those scriptures in you can read James 3, for example, which talks about the two ways of the two ways of thinking. And and in John 15, towards the end of John 15, it also took oh, no, sorry, John 16, it talks about how how Jesus said, you know, uh, who do you say I am? And Simon Peter says, You're the Son of God. And Jesus says, Flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. See, it's not the natural mind. It was his heavenly father. It's the spirit revealed that. So it's so basically what we have is the spirit is the only one to reveal truth. The spirit mm -hmm. is the only one to bring us to truth because if we're not connected with the spirit, we can do nothing. Mm -hmm. So there's this centrality of the spirit which is coming from the way we have to think what we have to do everything is focused on the spirit everything is the spirit and yet the church well and it's natural as humans we have to fight against it because our flesh wants to take control but if we have to fight it if we operate in the realms of the spirit and operate in the realm of miracles Mm. which is what God is calling us to do. God is calling you two to operate in the realm of miracles, you know, mm. to believe the miracles. Mm. So I hope that's helpful. <laughs>